safety training series is ongoing on the topic of chemicals safety. And this is part four. We have already learned how to store the chemicals, how to handle the chemicals, how to use the chemicals safely. What is the use and benefits of SDS? How the chemicals affect the health of the human beings and the environment? How the chemicals enter the body of the human beings? In the part four, we are going to learn the assessment of exposure to the chemicals. After recognizing the potential chemical hazards and after knowing the level of risk, then we have to decide the suitable control measures hierarchy of controls, and how we can manage the chemicals on site safely. Once you have identified your chemicals and their hazards, you then need to assess what the potential exposure to the chemical is. An exposure assessment involves looking at each chemical which you have identified and considering. And there might be few important questions with regard to each and every chemical on your site. For example, how you are using the chemical. Potentially lower exposure or it can cause or it can lead to a higher exposure. Who uses the chemical? For example, how many people they are exposed to these chemicals? A limited number of authorized personnel only or anyone on your site can use this chemical. How long is each user exposed to the chemicals? For example, full shift or a few minutes. Personal are only exposed for short durations or chemical is part of the work activity and personnel are exposed throughout the full shift. How often the chemicals used? Chemical is used infrequently or chemicals are in continuous use. How is the chemical used? For example, sprayed, poured, etc. Chemical is poured, therefore less likely to be breathed in during use. Chemical is sprayed and therefore is more likely to be breathed in. How will the user be exposed? For example, breathing it in a contact with skin. Effect of exposure will depend on the nature of the chemical. And also you can refer to safety data sheet for higher exposure or for lower exposure, how much the chemical is used, small quantities or bulk quantities of the chemicals are in use. Can non-user be exposed? For example, people working near the task, visitors, cleaning or maintenance staff, or only trained authorized personnel are exposed to the chemical. Chemical is used in general areas where all personnel are exposed. Dear friends and fellows, these are very important questions. Without this questioning, you are unable to recognize the correct risk assessment procedure. You cannot decide how to manage the risk. You cannot decide how to put suitable and effective control measures on site to manage the chemicals safely. Did you know? Cleaning and maintenance staff can potentially be exposed to high levels of chemicals as part of their tasks. And it's also a fact and truth that most of the time we are not considering these people in our risk assessment or exposure assessment on site. Another important question, have you assessed the risk of your chemicals? Dear friends and fellows, once you have identified your chemical hazards, and considered the exposure to them, you then need to assess the risk of each. Assessing the risk involves evaluating the information on the hazards and uses potential exposure of the chemical. Considering the likelihood of being exposed to a hazard and the severity of that hazard, which may lead to an adverse effect on health or safety, you can assess the risk in lots of ways you just need to decide a scale. Here is an example of possible scale. How likely is it that an exposure leading to ill health could happen? If the risk level is high, exposure to the chemical is likely. For example, very frequent use or use of large quantities 
with the possibility of exposure to skin or breathing chemical fumes is expected. For example, cleaning up spills, welding activities with no ventilation control. In the second scenario, if the risk is low, exposure to the chemical is unlikely. For example, very small amounts used are is used infrequently and under conditions where there is little or no chance of contact. For example, chemical is used in a closed contained system. You are on the platform of safety first life. If you are first time on this channel, kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon for all future notifications. And if you find the video informative, then like, comment and share it with your friends and colleagues. Let us learn now how severe is the hazard of a chemical. You know very well, there are three levels of risk, high, medium or low. First, we'll discuss high risk. For example, serious irreversible or potentially fatal health effects carcinogenicity, mutagenicity, reproductive toxicity, respiratory sensitization, or serious physical chemical effects, explosion. These all categories comes under high risk. What is a medium risk with respect to chemical safety? For example, less serious, potentially irreversible, non-fatal health effects. For example, skin sensitization, corrosive to skin or eyes physical, chemical effects, for example, flammable, or environmental effects, for example, hazardous to aquatic environment. These all categories comes under medium risk, and these are the different examples of chemical safety once you're going to make risk assessment for chemicals on your site. In the case, if the risk level is low, what it means, slight, transient, reversible, non-fatal health effects, for example, irritating to skin or eyes. Dear friends and fellows, there are no definitive rules as to what constitutes a high, medium or low risk. As a general rule, level of risk high, when would this occur? For example, if you are using chemicals or processes which have a high severity rating, irrespective of whether the likelihood is low or high. This indicates a high level of risk. Here, important question. What you have to do if you are a safety practitioner or a site supervisor, you are responsible for managing chemicals on your work site. You should consider obtaining expert advice in order to complete your risk assessment or replacing the chemical or process with a less hazardous one. Let us discuss if the risk level is medium and you are responsible for managing chemicals on your construction site. If you are using chemicals or processes which have a medium or low severity rating and a high likelihood rating, this indicates a medium level of risk. You should aim to minimize, reduce exposure. This is a mandatory action from you because you are responsible for chemicals at work and you have to protect your workers from harm and also you are responsible to protect the environment because this earth is ours and we don't have any other planet to live for. In the case, if the risk level is low, if you are using chemicals or processes which have a medium or low severity rating and a low likelihood rating, this indicates a low risk rating. You should still ensure that adequate control measures are in place. You will not just sleep and forget, but you should control, you should assess, and you will inspect the sides, and you will inspect the premises that the safety measures are in place. And still, after the working or processes, the risk level is in low category. Dear colleagues, once you have assessed the risk associated with the use of your chemicals, you then need to decide what control measures are required to keep you, your employees, and your workplace safe. At this stage, 
you should also consider any current control measures that are in place, such as, for example, number one, type of engineering controls, enclosures and ventilation. Are they effective and maintained regularly? Number two, current work practices are exposures. Number three, personal protective and safety equipment. Number four, training provided to employees. Number five, hygiene arrangements. For example, separate meal and wash facilities for your workers and staff at work. Number six, storage arrangements for chemicals. Number seven, level of housekeeping. Number eight, disposal of waste. And number nine, emergency arrangements or emergency procedures. For example, I wash emergency shower and hand wash facilities on site and in the office areas. These are very important points. If you are interested to implement suitable control measures, if you like to manage chemicals safely at site, you have to follow these important points. Now, you have to decide your control strategy for each of your chemicals. The level of control that need to be put in place depends on the level of risk of exposure. Dear friends and fellows, how to control risk at work, how to control hazards at source. This is the most important question for a safety practitioner or for the project management. And this is only possible if we'll comply the hierarchy of controls in order of preference. What are these hierarchy of controls? Number one, eliminate the hazardous chemical. Number two, substitute with a less hazardous chemical. Number three, install engineering controls. Number four, put administrative controls in place. And number five, use personal protective equipment, PPE, as per the risk assessment, as per the recommendation mentioned in the safety data sheet by the manufacturer. I'll explain the hierarchy of control, these five points in the upcoming video. Training session, chemical safety part four is over. If you have any question, please ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment and share the video. Hope to see you soon with a new HSC tutorial. Until then, take care. Good luck and goodbye.